Designing ambiences can sometimes be just as simple as going out and recording them, but sometimes the ambiences that we need to design are actually really hard to record or they just don't actually exist in real life. In that case, you have to be a little bit creative when designing them. And that's what we're gonna be doing in this video. All right, so when I'm designing elements, there are three elements that I like to focus on and think about as I'm designing. Number one, the things I'm gonna start with are gonna be the ambient beds. These are gonna be uh, the constant elements. So if you look here, you can see this lasts all the way through, this one lasts all the way through, and I have another one down here that lasts all the way through. So those are my constant elements. Number two are gonna be my interjecting elements. As you can see right here, they kind of come in and out as we go. And then finally we have number three, our uh, one shots or just single uh, uh, sound ambiences here, just our single sound sources. As you can see here, these are all like just little one shots here that, kind of, that are kind of uh, playing kind of intermittently in between the rest of the ambience sounds and the beds that we're designing. So that's how I like to think of it. I have those three elements. And what I like to do and what I did when I started designing this is I like to think about uh, what is the kind of the constant sounds that I want to have throughout my entire ambience. So for this one, I knew I wanted to have something kind of like burning or like a fiery kind of sound. And then after that, I knew I wanted to have some sort of like low sub rumble to give it that kind of cinematic uh, fire burning or like lava burning sound. So that's those are the two sounds I was going for. So let me show you those right now and how I created those. All right, so this is the first sound that, that I had in mind when I started designing this. And as you can hear, it's a very kind of like fiery kind of burning sound. And what this actually was, was uh, I was recording my oatmeal that I was making one morning, uh, just right in the pot. So if I take off all the effects here and we listen to it, um, that's exactly what is playing here. You even have some of that fridge hum <laughs> right, uh, right in that recording in there, which was totally fine. I was able to kind of design around that, but you can totally hear it. It's just bubbling and uh, at, the, at boiling point when I when I was preparing that oatmeal. So that is how I created that. So let's go through how I designed it to be able to go to that final layer that I had here. So the first thing I did was get rid of that hum because it was really annoying here. So I was using RX here for that, RXD hum. That helped a bit, it's not completely gone, but that's all right, it helped uh, enough. Next, I had manipulated here to bring down the pitch by 12. I had uber loud. It's really boosting the lows here. Some more uber loud just to, to, just to push kind of all the levels up a little bit. After that, I just cut out some of the lows and the highs. Finally, I had track space here. This is for the later elements when I wanted uh, them to be more important than this layer. So this is actually a later plugin that I used. And then finally, I had Snap Heap here. And what I'm doing here with Snap Heap is I wanted to add a bit more movement in the sound. So right now, the sound felt kind of static. And with the other elements that I had in my design, yeah, it felt kind of static, like always constant. And it didn't feel very natural. So what I did here is I just had very slight... Uh, movement here, I'm modulating the gain here just so kind of the sound kind of comes in and out a bit more naturally, if you will. Right, once I had that, I wanted um, another one, another sound that's kind of similar, and this is the sound I created right here. Right, so I wanted a sound that felt kind of distant and still had that kind of like rumbling uh, kind of effect. And this is the sound I created for that. And here, actually, my sound source for this one is actually very similar to the first one, except I think, if I'm not mistaken, this one was actually me just blowing through a straw into, the, into my oatmeal. So I was getting this kind of bubbly sound. Let's have a listen here. Yeah, so if I'm not mistaken, that's how I created that one. After that, what is making up the majority of the sound here is actually um, Silo here by Unfiltered Audio. And that's what's creating this kind of ambience. So let's have a listen here. So you can see here, I brought the pitch, uh, sorry, the pitch is down, the speed is up a little bit and the rate 35.6. 
And you see the movement here is going really fast. So that's how you're getting uh, like all the way around the listener here. And that's how why you're getting this uh, like 3D environment around your head here. After that, I brought down the volume because it was very loud. And tweaked it a little bit here with some EQ just to bring down some of those resonant peaks and just cut out that sub that we just didn't need. All right, so with that, I felt like I had some close elements. I had some like distant, distant uh, surround sound element with this layer here. The next thing that I worked on was this kind of interjecting element. And actually, these are the same sound sources. So I just uh, copied and pasted this track here uh, and put it up here. And I just kind of brought these elements in and out, but I designed it differently. And actually, I didn't. I don't think I designed it at all. I think these are just as is, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, so these are just here as is, just like that. So let's have a listen here. So all together we had sounds like this. All right, so to me that sounded pretty good. The next kind of bed that I wanted was going to be a sub uh, bed. And the way I created this, well, let's have a listen here and then I'll show you how I created it. Right, it's just this low rumble sound. And the way I created that was just inside a face plant here. And as you can see, I used a noise oscillator and I pitched it down uh, 20 semitones and I'm using that using my notes. So as I play lower on my keyboard, the sound gets lower pitched. I also assign this uh, uh, note uh, modulator here up here to the nonlinear filter, as you can see here, uh, the pitch here. So that as I play down, uh, the filter here goes down, the pitch goes down. And I think maybe this pitch as well goes down, right? So it's just really pitching down the sound a lot as I play lower on my keyboard. If I play higher, it's gonna play it um, higher, right? After that, it's just a matter of adding a bit of elements here. As you can see, I'm using uh, some EQ and I'm adding a bit of modulation here with the highs. This is just adding some movement in the sound. Very, very small detail, but it's just making it a bit more alive. And then the other thing that's really making it kind of dynamic is that this random LFO here is assigned to the cutoff here. So it's kind of slowly over time, it's gonna kind of open and close, which is gonna bring the volume up and down basically over time. Right, so it's kind of really randomizing every time I play, but um, yeah, it's, it's making the sound go in and out. And then I had a, a, a bit of uh, distortion uh, distortion here happening just to store it up a little bit. And that's it. So now with these elements, these were like my constant elements and my interjecting elements all together. And they sound like this. So with that, I was pretty happy, but one of the things about ambiences is that you never really want to have these constant kind of sounds because it can get really static very quickly. And that's when these interjecting uh, kind of one shots come into play here. This is going to add a lot of life to your uh, ambiences. And that's, uh, that, that's what I found when I was adding these in. So all of these are basically just different like fire sounds. I really want to have a lot of different like fire whooshes, fire bursts, flames, stuff like that. So if we look here, I'm, I'll play through a couple of these individually, but they're basically all some sort of fire sound. So this fireball. Add a fire whoosh here, design fire whoosh. And a lot of these are from like different sound packs. Uh, so if this one is here is from my magic sound pack. I did a fire whoosh here. Another one down here from my magic sound pack too. Right now I also added some manipulator and a bit of EQ. Um, let's see what else we had here. Again, other magic sound, other fire sounds. And then one that kind of stood out here was this one. I really like this one here. Right, so all of these are just some sort of different like whooshes, fire whooshes, fireballs, um, fire ambiences, and things like that. And all these different interjecting elements really, really add life to the design. So now if we play it all together, this is what we get.
like I said at the beginning of the video, sometimes just going out and recording ambiences is good enough and you can get some really good sounds that way. If you're interested in, in seeing that and how to do that and how to uh, edit those recordings, I made a whole video about that uh, doing natural ambiences. So if you wanna see that, make sure to check, uh, click on the cards here above or on the screen, wherever it is. If you have any questions about this video, leave it down below, I'd be happy to answer them. And I think that's it for now. Thanks so much for watching all the way through to the end. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.